Hey, what's going on guys? Kalamazi here, and this evening I want to talk to you all about a few reasons why you should and shouldn't play Warlock in the upcoming 10.1 patch and Avarice the Shadow Crucible. Now, over the majority of Avarice testing, Warlock has been one of, if not the top DPS in most raid testing, and I mean, that's because, well, a lot of these fights are single target based. They fit Warlock profiles very well. But all that being said, there still are some downsides and negatives to playing Warlock. I know it's surprising, but there actually are a few. So uh, tonight we're going to weigh the positives and negatives and uh, go from there and hopefully help you all decide who are on the fence about playing Lock in 10.1. Now, like usual, we can add on some profiles. Links all down below. They are all indeed free for you guys if you'd like. Uh, Twitch and Discord has them, which are in the description. And I also want to give a huge shout out to my patrons where we get too far in the video, like always. And guys, for all support on Patreon, thank you a million times. I really appreciate it. If you're looking at supporting on Patreon, should be a link up here as well as down below. And uh, once again, the 10.1 Warlock spreadsheet is indeed live on Patreon. Uh, if you'd like early, ac early access to that, the tier three Belgard rank or higher gets that. And that being said, let's just jump right into the video. Now, when it comes to general Warlock utility in your class tree, and I guess the universal utility you have in Mythic Plus and Raiding, Warlock is one of those classes that you need to have in basically every raid. Whether it's 1, 2, or 3, that does vary a bit. As we all know, Health Stones, Soul Stones, Demonic Gateway, just being very tanky in the first place and being able to be one of the classes you can count on to not die to every mechanic is obviously, you know, uh, pretty important. The thing with Warlock Utility in a raid setting is that you typically only need one Soul Well for Health Stones. You really only need one Soul Stone for Battle Rises. You typically, for the most part, in recent fights, have only needed one Gateway as well, which means that unlike a Mage at times, which has you know Ice Block and Cheat Deaths, or a Warrior that has Shout and everything else, Warlock Utility in a raid setting begins to have diminishing returns pretty quickly past the first Warlock, which means that if you're not good damage-wise or have a good damage profile on that fight, you might not want multiple Warlocks, which is pretty interesting to say, but that was the case in 10.0 involved the Incarnates. Moving on to the class tree here, for the most part, what you have in patch 10.0.7 is what you have in 10.1. The Warlock tree still has Fell Armor, Demon Skin, a lot of defensive-based traits. Curses are still here. If you want to amplify them, you can. You've got Banish. There's a couple of new nodes that are, I guess, new in 10.0.7, being Nightmare, uh, horrifies when moved. If you want to stun, you have Shadow Fury. If you want a shorter stun, you have Dark Fury to amplify Shadow Fury. You have new DPS-based talents that have been added here in Sargari Technique and Sakrathar's Guile. This does indeed change for Destro, Demo, and Aff. It's solid for Destro and Demo, or Destro and Affliction. Demonology has a Shadow Bolt damage increase from this talent, which is very, very irrelevant. Shadow Bolt's less than, it's right around 1% of your damage, so it's not really that big of a deal which does give you more floater points if you want more utility. Let's say you want to have Dark Fury or Banish on a raid fight. You can just honestly pull points from here and not really lose much as Demonology. Now, besides that, you still got a point here in Soul Link. You've got Soul Conduit for DPS increase. You've got Soul Remorph Synergy for DPS increase as well. The main issues in the Warlock tree lie in the final row, just like 10.0, being a Soul Burn, Inquisitor's Gaze, Summon Soul Keeper, and Grim Feast. Now, Grim Feast is basically a dead talent node in every PvE-based setting. You only play this talent if you're playing Affliction, and only if you're playing the Inevitable Demise trait that increases Drain Life damage. This trait itself, Grim Feast, does not increase Drain Life damage. It just makes it channel faster, which means essentially you can cast your next spell it faster if you're channeling Drain Life with Inevitable Demise. The unfortunate part with Affliction is that you're not playing in Neville Demise anymore because it's, it's very undertuned. So you're just sort of not playing one of your capstones in any setting as a Warlock, but you know, you win some, you lose some. Inquisitor's Gaze is incredibly RNG. There, If you think Power Infusion inflates parses, Inquisitor's Gaze at times can be upwards for Destro of 10% of your damage, and at times it doesn't proc at all on certain fights. I've seen logs on the same fight where one Warlock has 9%, 10% plus Inquisitor's Gaze damage, and the other Warlock has one or two or no procs at all. It is the biggest slot machine I've ever seen in this game, and unfortunately, I don't believe there's any ICD on it or bad luck protection, so it just chains over and over and over, or at times it doesn't proc at all, which is pretty unfortunate. Soul Keeper is just not really where you want to be. Uh, basically, your option here is to play Inquisitor's Gaze in every setting or not, and Soul Burn is fine. It's more utility. Uh, it's a bit niche at times, but when it's good, it's typically very good. I think overall the Warlock class tree is solid. What it comes down to is you're basically going to want to have at least one Warlock in pretty much every raid setting. Outside of all of the Incarnates, it's been a very, very, very long time that we've seen a fight kill without a Warlock. 
hillstones soul stones demonic gateways our utility is always highly sought after for a plethora of reasons and rating in mythic plus to a similar extent having a battle resin soul stone hellstones are very important in our utility in shadow fury random curses here and there a decent form of cc in nightmare it's not bad nightmare slash horrify it's not bad and we are relatively sought after but our raw damage is a bit more impactful in plus and we're not as good in plus i'd say comparatively as we are to rating mythic plus i give us probably a b rating for overall utility for rating i probably give us an a quite possibly s tier but we do indeed lose a lot of value in multiples because our utility begins to have diminishing returns moving on to destruction warlock in patch 10.1 if you've played destruction at all in dragonflight in general the clash tree is really not changing at all you still have powerful nodes whether you're in single target like madness of the azic here or roaring blaze you have good cleave base elements in pandemonium in rolling havoc in flashpoint and a good bit of universal damage and things like exposed potential chaos incarnate burned ashes and your purple infernal ritual of ruin slash avatar destruction from sepulcher this is our old tier set also plus diabolic embers destruction warlock in this current patch is very very strong when it comes to single target damage the builds you can build are very customizable like i mentioned playing either a havoc based build at times playing builds more single target with cdf and things like that and the reason you're playing channel demon fire this patch the biggest reason why our tree is changing to in incorporate cdf is because of our tier bonus heading into patch 10.1 for warlocks whether you're playing destro demo or affliction every single specs tier set revolves around a talent in your clash tree and for destruction that is channel demon fire our two-piece channel demon fire bolts immolate and incinerate have a chance to fire an additional demon fire bolt these bolts deal 50 percent increased damage to their main target then your four set demon fire bolts increase your fire damage by one percent up to 13 percent stacking up to eight times gaining a stack does not refresh the duration and casting cdf or channel demon fire resets this effect so basically what this says is that whenever you hit channel demon fire you will have an eight percent damage increase which does indeed affect chaos bolt it is whitelisted to affect chaos bolt as fire damage here for 13 seconds now channel demon fire's baseline duration is 21 second cooldown wise but that is reduced by the amount of haste you have so bloodlust flashpoint heroism or power infusion does gain a good bit of value on destruction warlock there's a positive there on the negative side of things channel demon fire is not really a talent that many like playing with and that's especially the case if you feel like you're being forced into playing channel demon fire now finding time to plant and channel an ability for two and a half seconds to give you a damage buff might not seem like it's that impactful or that hard to do but destruction is probably one of the least mobile specs in the game the only ability you can cast in the move with destro is pretty much conflict rate that you don't really want to cast in the move for a handful of reasons while you can it's fine do you have no way to cast any spells on the move outside of conflict rate which is a spell that has two stacks and a cooldown on it that also maintains roaring blaze if you space it out properly now in heavy heavy aoe when you have a lot of random fires going and you're getting more fuel from inferno playing the aoe build it feels very awkward taking time off the channel demon fire when you're capping on shards and inferno is giving you more value by casting more random fires giving you more shard generation giving you more raw damage and that is one of the issues with destructions two piece four piece heading into 10.1 now chances are high you'll still play the two piece in single target you'll play it in stack to target and quite likely play it in spread to plus target havoc cleave when it comes to heavy aoe there's still a debate if it's going to be played there are times where you might just say hey we don't have a two piece or four piece in heavy aoe in mythic plus and that's obviously not where you want to be now as far as other things destro like i mentioned is very 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 immobile you really only have one spell you can cast in the move and that is conflagrate on top of that you're pretty much under the duress i guess you can put put it in a way of madness of the azic here it constantly feels like you have to be casting chaos chaos bolt over the course of a fight or you lose madness of the azic here value you have to be casting a chaos bolt basically once every three and a half seconds or you just let this effect drop build multiple shards again then begin chaining chaos bolts once again it is very unforgiving having a five second maintenance window to cast chaos bolt dread touch for affliction was six seconds it was buffed to eight seconds in patch 10.0.7 but destro unfortunately was left out in the cold and madness is going to be one of the most annoying things to maintain in patch 10.1 if 
factoring in that most of the fights in Aberus are patchwork based, but a lot of them have random movement on them, random mechanics targeting you. Destro brings a lot of damage in single target, a lot of shoot target cleave, a lot of heavy AoE cleave with rain of fire. But the problem is that you have to maintain a st stationary gameplay. If you have to move, your damage drops like a rock, and that is current destruction. Now, we've seen destruction do very, very well in Mythic Plus settings, in higher in Mythic Plus settings, in plus 24, 25 content, in keys where you can pull multiple packs at once, AOE them all down, have them live for a while, and get good Inferno value. And that is going to be the same case in patch 10.0.7, sorry, 10.1. But like I mentioned, having a tier bonus that revolves around casting Channel Demon Fire and Mass AOE feels very awkward. And the jury's still out if it's going to be relevant enough to even hit Channel Demon Fire in Mass AOE. When you're capping on shards and playing a talent like Inferno that encourage you to cast more random fires quickly over and over and over for even more shards, even more damage, it sounds like a pretty bad idea taking three seconds off the Channel Demon Fire in the middle of, well, all of that. Overall thoughts for Destro in 10.1. If Demonology ends up getting nerfed, which it might, it might not, we'll see where it goes. Destruction Warlocks wouldn't be your second best bet. It is still very solid in the raid. They're both very, very similar in single target sims. When it comes to higher end Mythic Plus, Destruction Warlock is likely your best bet over Demonology. Giving it most likely, I, I would give Destro an A tier rating in Mythic Plus in 10.1 if you're in the right setting. Getting huge AoE value, huge Inferno value. It's good in single target, even playing AoE builds. And if you're in a raid setting, Destruction Warlock's also pretty solid on the fights that cater to, cater to its toolkit. Forgotten Experiments, the Amalgamation Chamber, Rashok at times, Zaskarn, Zakali Assault. If you can get that mass AB profile or that spread Havoc based profile, Destro can be a Swiss Army Knife. It can dissect any fight, bring good damage to it, and it is certainly looking to be a good play in patch 10.1, depending on where tuning lands. So overall, Destruction is not a bad bet. And if you don't like Destro, Demo and Aff aren't terrible options either. Now, when I say not a terrible option, I mean that there are surprisingly classes and specs that are worse than Affliction Warlock in this game. Uh, but memes aside, Affliction's in an odd spot. It went live in patch 10.0.7 being the best spec in the game. The buffs that it got, the talents that it got being Dark Virtuosity, uh, Kindled Malice, a few in the class tree, and the buffs that it got as well made it a very, very strong spec. Like Destruction, Affliction is very customizable. You can play a single target build, you can play a heavy AoE build, you can play hybrid builds to bring a lot to the table, but in the end, numerically, if the numbers aren't there, it's not worth playing. Now, this is partially due to the fact that Destro and Demo are just very good right now. In Aberus and 10.1, their tier sets are pretty good. They bring a lot of damage to the table. And partially due to the fact that Affliction was quite possibly over nerfed a bit in patch 10.0.7 for how good it was in the first few days. There were a handful of bugs with the spec. Warlock had a few universal bugs that were fixed. And then a few days into the patch, they ended up nerfing a handful of things for Affliction and knocking it down to unsurprisingly being the worst spec for Warlocks. Once again, now the class tree hasn't really changed much in 10.1, really hasn't changed at all. The builds you play in 10.0.7 are what you're playing in 10.1. You're still playing Dark Lair, still playing Dread Touch, still playing the Haunt, Haunted Soul Row here. You can customize the build a bit to get Seed and Sow and Soul Flame if you like in certain settings. You are indeed playing Soul Swap in single target, and that's not because it's good. It's because you want to spend less talent points to get to Withering Bolt and the end tier talents here sort of due to the fact that Inevitable Demise is just so undertuned right now too and left out in the cold as well. You're not really playing that, but overall Affliction's just sort of in an awkward-ish kind of spot. Now its tier bonus is also in a bit of an awkward spot. It's not bad. It's relatively exciting to play with, but it feels pretty similar to where we are currently in point seven. Your two set says Vile Tank cooldown reduced by five seconds and Phantom Singularity's cooldown is reduced by 12 seconds. Vile Tank and Phantom Singularity damage is increased by 60%. Now your four piece says enemies damaged by Phantom Singularity gain infirmity for its duration. Enemies damaged by a Vile Taint basically do the same. Increasing damage taken by 10% for the duration of Phantom Singularity or Vile Taint. This does indeed work with Dark Lair extensions. However, the 60% damage increase to Phantom Singularity and Vile Taint is not as impactful as it may seem. And while having them more frequently, cooldown reduction, being 5 to Vile Taint and 12 to Singularity might sound pretty good. The unfortunate part is that this encourages you to pop them on cooldown, 
But if you do, you end up holding your dark layer for 15-ish seconds due to popping them on cooldown. It gives you dark layer around, I think, 218-ish, probably like 220-ish, depending on first dark layer cast if you're playing Singularity. And I believe around 213-ish if you're playing Vile Taint, which is not the end of the world, but it just feels awkward. A good fix to this would just be to reduce the cooldown reduction again by 7 seconds on Vile Taint and about, I think, 15 on Singularity. It would solve all the problems. It would buff your two-piece, four-piece and make it feel much better, much more fluent. Affliction's two-piece, four-piece is, I believe, the lowest simming of all three Warlock specs. And while it does feel better to have these effects more often, it pretty much feels similar to where you are in retail. They're off cooldown, they're back on cooldown, and when they all line up, you pop them all together. Now, as far as actual rating is concerned, early on in the patch 10.1, Affliction was actually pretty good. We had the pre-nerf version of it on PTR, and it was decimating every fight. Most fights in Avarice are single target based. Affliction can be very good at doing single target damage. However, like I mentioned, it was nerfed considerably. And at this point, I don't envision Aff being played on any fights, looking at current tuning for all three specs heading into Avarice. To a similar extent, in Mythic Plus, Affliction also suffers from the nerfs. There was a bug with Seated Corruption that was fixed, which ended up nerfing Affliction's AoE. Aff's AoE is still solid when you have cooldowns you, you still have grim feast or grim breach you still have at times dark harvest with soul rot and you'll have seed with so and soul flame bringing you that on demand damage when mobs die like you've seen in alcohol academy previously but the awkward part is that it's niche soul flame can be very good it can be very bad it's not like destro or demo that has this universal applicability and if you're comparing destro to demo to f affliction is also likely the worst spec in mythic plus by a considerable margin heading into 10.1. Now, I'm not saying Affliction's dead, uh, but at the same time, I think Demo and Destro just bring better profiles in basically every setting. If they were to buff Affliction, it is a very customizable spec. It has a lot of possible builds you would play in both Rating and Mythic Plus, but in its current form, chances are likely if you're looking to play Affliction, you should look to play Demo or Destro instead, or likely just play a Shadow Priest in 10.1, because Affliction's not really in a state where it will be optimal or applicable in any setting if you're looking to do it from a competitive perspective. It's also worth mentioning that Affliction actual cooldowns are just not impactful at all. Dark Lair was part of the recent nerfs in patch 10.0.7. However, it was buffed when the patch went live. They changed the way it deals damage from being AoE based at times to being pure single target based, which meant that it was buffed in single target, but it lasted five days and nerfed it again. Dark Lair has felt like a very underwhelming cooldown for, I would say, four or five years now. It is the least impactful of all three Warlock cooldowns, and it leads to a very flat damage profile. Whether you have Dark Lair at two minutes or Dark Lair at four minutes, there's not a large bump in damage here, as you can see. There are these minor peaks and valleys due to Vile Taint or Singularity being a shorter cooldown from your tier bonus, but it is not comparable at all to what Demonology can do, which is basically old Benthir Boomkin, with these incredible bursts of damage, then dropping much lower sustain-wise, but having a burst again a minute and a half later. And while one might look better being more consistent in a progression-based setting, that's not always the case. Being able to allocate strong cooldowns to certain points of a fight where, hey, we need to kill this ag quickly, we want to push through this phase quickly, those damage profiles, like Demonology, are often much, much better than ones that do the same damage for a minute or 10 minutes with very minor bumps whenever you hit your cooldown. And unfortunately, with Dark Lair being nerfed, it left Affliction in a spot of having no real cooldowns. It is a pretty flat damage profile, and even hitting your cooldowns means that you only do a little bit more damage. If you're at points in a fight where you need to burst an add down or push through a phase, Affliction is likely not your best bet. And finally, that brings us to the Demonology Warlock. Demonology is looking to be one of, if not the best spec when it comes to Avarice and Mythic Rating heading into patch 10.1. Similar to Aff and Destruction, our Clash Tree really has not changed at all, barring one or two minor talent changes being to the Houndmaster Stratagem, which is no longer increasing our single target damage with Tyrant. But for the most part, the builds you have in patch 10.0.7 are also what you get in patch 10.1. Like I mentioned, Demonology is already very good in 0.7. It's getting even better in patch 10.1 due to its tier bonus. The two piece states demon bolt damage increased by 15%. Consuming a demonic core, demonic core is an instant cast demon bolt, reduces the cooldown of Grimoire Felguard 
by one second. This means that basically Grimoire Felgar becomes a minute and a half cooldown, which syncs with every single Demonic Tyrant, which is also a big DPS increase due to playing Ray of Tyranny in patch 10.1. Your four piece states Grimoire Felgar damage increased by 20%, and when Grimoire Felgar is active, all your demons deal 20% additional damage, and that effect is extendable by Demonic Tyrant because Grimoire Felguard is extendable by Demonic Tyrant. Demonology's two-piece, four-piece is likely the strongest one, if not one of the strongest of any spec heading into patch 10.1, and it makes Demo Warlocks a high priority for giving tier two early on into a progression-based setting. On top of that, Demonology, this version of Demonology, is likely the strongest power infusion target this game's ever seen, due to its two-piece, four-piece, due to how it just functions in the first place, and due to Nether Portal, Hit Lord synergies as well. Now, there are two different builds you can play. One is based around Immutable Hatred, which is more of a consistent sustained damage build. And one is based around Nether Portal with Gul'dan's Ambition, which is your Pit Lord. Pit Lord is indeed affected by power infusion. You have trinkets you can play, one being your Clash Trinket and one being an on-use trinket that can front load an insane amount of damage into your Pit Lord, into your Nether Portal, which gives Demonology Warlock likely the highest burst damage profile in single target in the game in 10.1 as well. The upside, like I mentioned for AF, you're able to burst through these choke points, these points in a fight where you want this damage profile quickly by giving your demo locks power infusion and blasting through them. The downside is that you sustain very little damage outside of CDs, outside of Tyrant, outside of Nether Portal. This is basically Venthyr Boomkin from Sanctum Domination. You really do an absurd amount of damage if you don't mess up your ramp, as long as that's okay. As long as you get power infusion, your damage is ludicrous. Without power infusion, it's still good, but nowhere near as good. And outside of that, you really don't do any damage at all. But those kind of damage profiles, the ones that bring that high, high burst damage, are likely, typically, most of the time, more sought after than the ones that are very flat, like destruction, like affliction. And this is another reason Demonology looks to be very, very strong heading into patch 10.1 in a raid setting. In a Mythic Plus setting, Demonology is fine. There were nerfs pushed to our AOE a few weeks ago uh, for some reason. Not really sure why. Didn't need it. But I'd say Demonology is likely your best universal mid-tier pug spec. If you're playing Warlock, it'll always do good damage. It has good passive cleave in called Dreadstalkers and Felstorm and Demonic Strength and those abilities that cleave. And you have your Tyrant every minute or minute and a half, depending on your talents. It's a good universal just set it and forget it kind of spec. But I do feel Demonology is not as good as Destro on the high end when you have that heavy, heavy Inferno AB profile in higher keys where packs live for a long time and you're pulling multiple packs at one time. Now, as mentioned, our Clash Trinket is also very, very good for Demonology. It is the best for Demonology compared to Demo, Destro, and Aff by a long shot, essentially giving you two on use trinkets for Demo, being able to front load a large amount of damage into every Tyrant and every Nether Portal Pit Lord you're playing it. Once again, further separating Demonology from Destruction and Affliction in patch 10.1. Overall in patch 10.1, I would give Demonology an A tier, possibly S tier rating when it comes to Aberus. Aberus is mostly patchwork based fights or stack cleave based fights, which Demonology is very, very good at. In Mythic Plus, I give it a B tier. The tier bonus is good in Mythic Plus, but it is not as good in plus based settings as it is AOE or as, as it is raid based settings. I guess AOE sort of factored in there too. Playing Ray of Tyranny and be, being able to sync every Grimoire Felguard to every Tyrant is nice and it is a boost in Mythic Plus, but I don't feel it's as applicable as most raid settings you're going to encounter in Aberyst. There are going to be a lot of fights where you want to push through certain phases, get a lot of strong on-demand single target burst, and Demonology is going to be your best bet. I don't believe there's been a spec in the game that has been a better power infusion target than this version of Demonology, heading into patch 10.1. The question is, will that last heading into patch 10.1? So thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully the video might have helped anybody that's on the fence about playing Warlock in patch 10.1 uh, make a better, more informed decision. I do think that Warlock is better in the raid in 10.1, Avarice than it is Mythic Plus, but it still maintains that strong AB profile that Destro has in the high-end settings where you're pulling multiple packs and getting large Inferno or Fire value. And to a similar extent, Demonology is not terrible when it comes to like mid-tier, even upper mid-tier pug keys when you're looking for more of a 
rounded profile. Plus, the four piece does help demonology a lot as well. If you're an AF fan, I mean, AF is okay, but Demon Dash Charge is likely better. And uh, yeah, so I would likely put Warlock in A plus tier. Uh, I guess maybe S tier, depending on when the raid launches, if things stay the way they are. And in Mythic Blast, probably like B. B plus ish, but things can change a bit. The metas change depending on dungeons. I don't think lock is a bad choice. We are certainly one of the safer range heading into the patch. So we'll see where all that goes. Let me know what you guys think of the video down below in the comment section. If I missed anything in the video, also uh, feel free to put it down there. I'm curious. And if you have any questions, I'll get back to you as well. Drop it all down below. Like I mentioned, we can add on some profiles also free on Twitch uh, and my discord links to both down below. And I also like usual want to give one huge shout out again to my patrons for all support on Patreon guys. Thank you million times really appreciate it uh, if you're looking at supporting on patreon should be a link up here as well as down below and once again the tier three fail guard rank or higher does indeed get early access to the 10.1 warlock ptr spreadsheet which is, in, which is indeed now on patreon and uh yeah so thanks again guys i really appreciate it with all that being said thanks for watching if you like the video hit the like and sub buttons below and listen it if you're on the fence about playing warlock you've got about a week or so until the actual patch launches and Honestly, I I can say, with, um, barring tuning coming after this video releases, I think Warlock is likely one of the safer, if not safest bet. Mage got buffed. Mage is looking good too. But there are a lot of Patrick fights in Aberus. A lot of fights that are also like Havoc Cleave fights that fit Destro and or Demo's damage profiles pretty well. And like I said also, if Destro and Demo get nerfed, Aff isn't terrible either. It's just not as good as the two best specs. So <laughs> thanks for watching, guys. And I'll catch you all again soon on stream. Peace.